Jason Wright is now the president of the Washington football team. And you know what, Teek? Uh, first of all, you, of all people, will appreciate his Twitter bio, right? He writes, huge dork who too <laughs> often gets a pass because of seven years as an NFL running back. Jason, Tiki and Tierney, congratulations on the job. Welcome to our show. How are you doing today, man? Uh, thank you. Thank you. I'm doing well. I'm doing well, y'all. How are you? We are good, Same. Jason. It's, it's an honor to chat with you. I know you were on with my former teammate, Michael Strahan, this morning on Good Morning America, and I echo what he said. Congrats on being, first of all, the first black NFL team president. You're also the youngest right now at 28. You're a McKenzie guy. Uh, I have some friends at the McKenzie, so I understand what that means. Uh, nice. and you were, you nice. were in charge of diversity, equity, and inclusion, so you're ripe for what's going on in this country right now right now. The first question I have for you, Jason, um, is how did this come about? I mean, it seems out of left field for us, but I'm sure it wasn't for you. How did this come? How did this happen? Right. A little bit of it was an inevitability, right? And I'm happy to be on with y'all. I'm a business executive in D.C. area and a former football player, and the Snyders own the professional football team in the D.C. area. (laughs) Eventually, our networks were going to overlap, right? There we go. (laughs) But they happened to overlap at just the right time where they were looking for an executive for this role. And the conversations we had were what got me excited about this job. They weren't about policies we would change. They weren't about business strategy and finance. They were about value. They were about culture. They are about bold moves to set a new direction. We talked about terms like inclusion, transparency, accountability, trust, openness. And we talked in a concrete way about what Coach Rivera was doing on the football side to establish those. And I got to opine a bit about what that would mean for me on the business side. Mm-hmm. And we found over the course of that really open, transparent conversation so many points of alignment in how we think about culture, high-performing organizations, and the pivots that the club wants to make. And I've been excited to uh, to take on this partnership with them. Yeah, no, it it is exciting. It's exciting, I think, for... Uh, those that want to be in front office positions, blacks that want to be in front office positions, because you're a pioneer uh, in this regard. You know, we know what's going on with the Washington football team right now, from the rename to the cultural change that's being led by Beth Wilkinson, uh, who was a prosecutor and obviously a culture restructurer. You know, I, I wonder, you know, as you take this job, the challenges that you know are right in front of you, how daunted are you by them? Uh, I mean, I would be, I have the utmost hubris if I didn't say that they were big challenges. Um, uh, But I'm excited to take them on because where there's challenge, there's also opportunity, right? And there are a couple near-term things we're facing. One that we haven't talked about is COVID and navigating a COVID season and coming out of it with great player and staff health and safety and having really good agile operations that are ready for the unexpected. And then the second you did touch on, and that's the culture shift that's been started by the independent investigation. And actually, guys, that was a really good signal for me to believe that this organization was serious about pivoting in another direction. When you invite somebody in to open every closet, overturn every rug, and see the good, the bad, and the ugly, that is real commitment to change. And Mm -hmm. it's a great first step. You know, I don't know yet if the actual situation is better or worse than I think it might be outside in. I'll find out when I actually start next Monday. But I know where we're going to head. We're going to head to a culture that's trust-based, where colleagues feel safe and able to raise their voice when they see leadership that doesn't align with our values. It's going to be a workplace where women are empowered to have voices in all the decisions that matter, not just because they should, but also because it helps us make better business decisions. Mm -hmm. And then it's going to be a culture where we're accountable to one another, where we actually measure performance. Like Tiki, it's like being on the field. The eye in the sky don't lie. That's right. We're going to measure how we do. (laughs) Right. We're going to measure how we do on business production. Um, and not to not to hold people to you know hold something over people, but actually to find out where we need to improve and where we need to invest and better equip our people. My assumption is that we have great talent. So we're talking to Jason Wright, and um, you know the Washington Football Team is is a team that you know I, I, I listen. There's certain teams in certain leagues when those certain teams are good. Jason, it, it just. The yeah. league elevates. Like when the Raiders are good, ah, the NFL is just a little bit better. You know when, mm-hmm, when, mm-hmm. when they, you know when the Yanks and Red Sox are rocking, baseball is good. What, what's amazing to me is that, and this is a dangerous word pertaining to sports, apathy. And maybe I'm off base with this, Jason, but from a distance, the empty seats, the only measurables that I have is somebody who's not there in the market. It seems like uh, apathy began to infiltrate the Washington fan base. Is that? accurate do you did you feel that 
Uh, and how do you rectify that? Well, I mean, I'll, I'll say one thing. Uh, we are really fortunate to have such an invested fan base that has invested hope and trust year after year after year and continues to do so. I actually think we're a bit spoiled um, because I wouldn't actually call this fan base apathetic. Uh, the number of uh, tweets I received within, I don't know, 30 seconds of being announced around uh, opining on the name and new uniform designs and things like that don't suggest apathy to me by any means. Uh, well, and, and, and Jay, Jay, let me just, for, yeah. for context point here, to, to be fair, that is a word that I never even remotely associated right. with, the, with, with Washington. I just felt like the last year or so, that it, it felt that way. Never really before that. You guys are or were one of the standards of the league, no question. Yeah, and I think what you're what you're saying is there's a there's a dip from where this fan base normally is. Yep. If this fan base is normally head and shoulders above all others in the level of engagement, excitement, et cetera, devotion to the club, there's been a step back. And that's understandable. Mm. And the, the, the thing that's going to fix that quickest is the on-field performance, and Coach Rivera is setting together his plan to shift the culture and performance on the field to do that. Yeah. But there's also something we can do on the business side, and that's actually just engage with fans. Yeah. You know, y'all, it's like any relationship. You've got to spend time with folks. You have to listen to them. And I think as we actually get out there more and have more interface with fans through all the different channels we have, engaging around the new identity and name, we're going to learn what the fans actually need from their own mouths to reestablish trust and to start to build the engagement from there. And that's, you know, that's the plan as it is today before I get in. Yeah, no, that, that, that sounds like the right path to take. Now, I don't know Daniel Snyder other than maybe seeing him on the field a couple of times while I was still playing. When I know him by reputation. Whether that's good or bad is irrelevant, obviously, to the question I'm about to ask you. Daniel Snyder has a reputation. He was not implicated in these uh, uh, assault allegations or inappropriate behavior towards women allegations from the Washington Post article. But tell us about your interaction with Daniel Snyder to take this job and why you believed he was the right person for you to leave a very good job as a partner at McKinsey to come join the Washington football team? Yeah, um, that's a really good question. I, my conversations with Dan have been personal, transparent. We've asked each other provocative questions. We've talked about past mistakes. We've talked about things we wish we would have done differently in the past. Um, and that level of transparency, openness, um, and then the alignment of values that I talked about earlier in setting a new direction gives me the utmost confidence in our partnership going forward. And I think Coach Rivera felt the same thing. You know, Coach Rivera could have a lot of jobs. He chose this one. Um, and I think that confidence in what Dan is going to enable him to do and empower him to do the same way he's empowering and enabling me to do on the business side are real. Mm -hmm. and, and then I think it's on us uh, to, to perform, whether it's on the football side or the business side. And as long as we're doing that, this working relationship is going to be you know, rooted in those values, and it's going to be quite productive. Um, and Dan's a really smart guy. You don't get to be a billionaire for nothing, y'all. Um, <laughs> unless, so, unless, you, unless you're born into it. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. Yeah, fair. fair. Fair point. He's you not one of those. Yeah. He's not one of those. I got you. He's a smart guy. He's a I smart know. guy. And I'm actually looking, I'm looking forward to the thought partnership on some of the creative things we're going to do. So, you know, I'm, I'm all in, y'all. So it's Jason Wright, and he's the first. Uh, he's he's the new president and first African American president for the for the Washington Football Team. Um, you know, I, I won. The, I know the dynamics how how it's how it's structured contractually, and and Ron Rivera is doing the football, and Jason is doing the business, and all the other stuff that he just detailed and chronicled here. But as we know, you played seven years in the NFL. Let's say in, in three years, you got the new name, the merchandise is you know flown off the shelves, and Haskins is the right guy, and you guys are doing well, and Jason's feeling himself right, humbly, of course, because you don't want that hubris to set in that you mentioned before. You know, would you feel the the freedom? Do you think that it's on, on at any point you'll have the latitude to? <laughs> knock on Ron's door and say, hey, coach, from a football point of view, because, Jason, I ask this because most team presidents do have that ability to do that. Yeah, I mean, I've, I've sent Ron a text every day, or Coach Rivera text every day with my draft board. So, um, <laughs> no, nah, man, I don't have any desire <laughs> to go that direction. I think the division of responsibilities is actually really important and it's going to help us be more effective. Um, I think where being a former player is going to be helpful is making sure the business operations, number one, don't get in the way of football operations. You know, there's, yep. there's a need to be rigorously focused on Sunday from Wednesday, in fact, all the way through Monday afternoon mm -hmm. to debrief, prepare for the next week and pivot. 
there's a window of time where the players can engage on the business side, but we need to be respectful of that to have the best on-field performance. Um, and then there, there's a lens uh, that we can bring uh, from the player side around fan engagement and what it means to have a, a, an external face to the community that is consistent, that players become accustomed to over time. You know, TV, you experience this too over yep. time. You, you find that rhythm. That's something we need on the business side, and that's something from my experience will hopefully bring. But, no, I'm not giving draft advice. I'm not mm-hmm. trying to weigh in on starting lineups or anything to that degree because, honestly, that would be a leap too far. Yes, I played seven years, but I haven't been two decades as a coach scouting mm-hmm. players, honing my craft. That's a level of expertise that is much higher, much like one of those folks if they took a business class wouldn't come over and run finances. Yeah, yeah. No, I, got I, hear, you. I hear you. You know, and, and Jason, you – you, your path is very unique. So you played you, Northwestern, played for seven years. You went back to the University of Chicago, which, by the way, my uh, my brother's daughter is going and rolling in uh, this fall uh, to get your master's degree. And you took the path that set you on to where you are now, obviously through McKenzie. And now you're, you're the Washington football team's president and the first black one in the National Football League. This will be the hardest question we ask you. There are not enough blacks in front office positions in the National Football League. How can you help change that? I think, number one, I can do a good job. Um, but I think secondarily, um, you know, we can take this moment in and give it its due, not because of me, mm-hmm. but because of all the folks that paved the way to make this happen. You know, there's one obvious example. You know, Kevin Warren, who's now the commissioner of the Big Ten, was the COO of the Vikings for many years. He basically did the role that I'm walking into in everything but name. He did all the activities. He had all those responsibilities. And so the the proverbial glass ceiling had a whole lot of cracks in it from other folks that had come before along the way. And so I think it's important to acknowledge that in this moment um, and and, and expect in this moment to make it much easier for others to walk into roles like this in the future. Um, uh, I think the other thing besides doing a good job and acknowledging the moment is to actually be intentional about cultivating and developing talent within the organization and across uh, the NFL ecosystem. Um, Not just black folks, not just brown folks, not just women, but just great talent, up-and-coming innovative leaders across the board. And hopefully that is a diverse cadre of people that see the next set of front office leaders. Thanks for watching. Make sure you like and subscribe, and don't forget to hit that bell to be notified when we drop fresh content.